finance plan um, here that's more for the producer offset. Um, and something that we're seeing quite frequently, it's a um, very low budget television <coughs> series. Um, so I just want to, I want to go through this, but this afternoon I'm doing producer offset in a lot of detail. But I um, just want to talk about the financing and when thing go, things go wrong, what can you do? So in this finance plan, um, the keystone in, investor was the, the broadcaster, so they were in first, and um, they're in for a licence fee and also um, equity. And then Screen Australia came on board and also the state agency, and then producer offset at um, 20%. So um, looking at the top, the budget is um, 1.375 million and your Quake budget um, will always be lower because not everything in the budget is, is Quakeable. And into the finance plan um, is 90% of the um, producer offset. Within that Quake budget, you don't have your contingency, so you've always got a buffer there. It's not only the 10% um, that you've got um, from the producer offset itself, uh, itself but also the Quave, and if you are filming in Australia, most people will, will spend that contingency on, on Quave. So if you don't need that in your finance plan, and assuming that you spent 75% of your contingency on Quave, then at the very end, you, you, would, you would expect an excess of the producer offset of just over 33,000. So that is the producer margin that comes back to your company. But looking at it, if something goes wrong in this, if you go to Screen Australia and they can't give a 500,000 grant, they come back and they say only 450,000. And so what can, what can you do to fill that gap in the financing? Um, first off is the, um, is the additional producer offset. And, um, and we, we structure this as a subordinated producer offset loan because our main, um, one of our main investors only does up to 90% of the producer offset. So that would come in as additional additional lending. So you could go to 95% or even 100% of your producer offset. It's not great for you as producers because you don't get that excess producer offset back once you're finished. But if you do actually need that to cover your financing, then the option is always there. Um, the post deal, something that Trish me mentioned, is um, something that we see on nearly every one of our finance plans. <coughs> And um, you just have to be aware that when you're doing a post deal, it does have to be a, it's a related party transaction. It ha does have to be commercially um, like- an Realistic. Yeah, yeah, realistic. You can't over inflate your, inflate your post budget to increase your quote. Um, we would be all over it as well as Screen Australia. So um, just something to watch, it, watch out for with that. And again, it does have to be cash passing through the bank accounts with with um, tax invoices, and also that post ha house will have an equity position and a um, like an equity investor with a share of net profits. It has to be a like-for-like -like trans transaction with other equity investors. Um, we're seeing a lot of reinvestment of fee and overhead, and again, the same principles apply. Don't overinflate your fit fees in the budget so that um, you're increasing your quake. It just won't get through. Um, it has to be a like-for-like -like investment so that if you are putting money in, you are getting, getting an equity position and we'd expect to see a share of net profits as well. And again, cash must pass through bank accounts and tax invoices must be raised. Um, one thing I, I would say, if you are going to do that, um, take tax advice because obviously you, you might have a tax issue. Um, other things that we're seeing coming into the budgets, I think particularly in the documentary space, um, good pitch and a lot of um, a lot of really inventive um, distribution models coming out now, so that's really exciting. And there's just other things that are around, like there's private investors, but you have to um, when you're working with private investors, you have to obviously they are involved in the project right the way through, but also um, they are interested in their their recruitment position and the project. It's not it's not just about money. They will have a personal passion for the for the project. Um, and there are other investors around like MIF, but you need to uh, Melbourne Film Festival. Um, but you need to be aware of their requirements as well, such as the um, delivery dates when that when the the film has to be finished, and also their holdbacks and premiere rights. Um, We've seen recently a lot of change to the um, producers going for the Screen Australia 
grant rather than the investment. And I'm going to ask Helen from a producer's point of view sort of what the difference is. From a financier's point of view, uh, the contracting's a lot simpler. Screen Australia take a hands-off uh, approach, although they are very much in the background still monitoring all of that. Um, but that's interesting because it does mean that the um, it's, it's from I, I think it's much better position out the back for recruitment for producers. But Helen, can you just explain the difference between the two? Yep. Sure. So if you ask Screen Australia for five hundred thousand or less, um, it's a grant. And um, what happens is that that when you work out your finance plan. Um, you look at the percentages of equity that the different people have put in. So, for instance, if it was 500,000, it may be, I don't know, 15% of your total budget or 20% of your total budget. And because Green Australia have given it to you as a grant, you get that 20%. So that when, when sales are happening and um, the investors are starting to recoup the money that they've put into the project, you get the money that Screen Australia has put in. So it's a really big, big benefit. Um, Screen Australia did it to try and encourage people, partly to not ask for so much from them, because otherwise, you know, you may want, you may ask them for a million or something, so they were trying to pull the, pull it, the asks down to, so they could finance more people. But also because if they're not an equity investor, from their point of view, the whole legal process is much simpler. Um, they don't need the sort of controls that they need if they're an equity investor. So they've got a very simplified um, agreement, which is much faster to, to negotiate. Um, so from our point of view, it's definitely a benefit. And if we can possibly do, do it as a grant, we would. Yeah. One thing that Trish mentioned before too with the um, producer offset to the equity um, position out the back um, and if you wanted to share that with creators, it's, it's definitely worth thinking about sharing that with private investors too. So yeah. if you're encouraging them in and they get a recruitment position which I would suggest would be pretty much up the top with a premium but if you needed to encourage them with additional premium then you have got the um, producer equity position to encourage that, something very, very powerful. Which is basically yeah. um, first dollar recruitment. Yes. And most of the, um, you know, particularly with creatives, they're well behind um, after hitting um, break even, which may never happen. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, do people understand what equity means? Do, do people understand that sort of aspect of it? I just think this is really important to, um, it's a great little demonstration that basically anything that's a grant um, or anything that's a license fee, it means that whoever's putting that money in, they don't have any ownership of the film mm -hmm. and so they don't get any um, share of the money that you earn from the film. Whereas if people are equity investors, then they get a share um, of the returns from the, the project um, according to the percentage of their equity investment. And so as much, the more money you can get as soft money or grants, um, then that becomes part of your equity or your ownership of the film as the producer, so that increases your percentage. And um, however much of a percentage that you as a producer have, then that's what you are then able to divide up potentially with other um, partner, creative or um, investors who are contributing to your, um, your project. Um, the, and the other thing, the other the other thing that's important to explain is that marketplace attachments don't get any share of money that comes in. So yeah. license fees are outside yeah. that. So um, well, so they're buying the rights to use your material. Yeah, they're, they're, they're buying, paying, yeah, they're program. buying something. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it is only the people who are putting loaning in a funny way. I mean, really, an equity investment is a loan against sales. Um, the reality is that often people don't recoup it, yeah. which is why we don't call it a loan, because it wouldn't work from a tax point of view. So in this particular example, because we've got Screen Australia in there as a grant, then the equity, sort of first dollar coming back from sales um, outside the broadcaster um, licence fee, 
um, the producer would get 83.79% of that money coming in, and then the broadcaster would be recouping their equity up to the 47,000. So that 83.79% is the money that you've got to share with your creatives or, or you know, keep yourself or, or share with both investors. Or what yes, you and you can do an enhanced um, arrangement with an investor. You might find a private investor who is critical to getting the film happening or not because it's the last piece of money you need. Um, and they say, well, look, I'm willing to put in, um, uh, say, 500000 or, or 100000 or whatever it is, um, which, would rep which would represent a certain percentage of the whole film. And that's what they would seek to get as a return. But they're umming and ahhing about doing it. You could say to them, look, I've got a significant amount of equity already in this film. I will enhance your position by giving you 120% return on your money rather than 100%. And suddenly that might be the, the deal maker for you.